ever known, we are all the land of Shakespeare's immortal prose. The land of England, land of pageantry and history, where the picturesque cottages of the rolling countryside make their pastoral pattern, where the white cliffs of Dover rise in ponderous majesty above the singing sea. And an ancient Roman lighthouse still looks out upon the channel's surging tide. Where castles in the air fling their turret doors against the sky, their once embattled barricades like some picture from a fairy tale. Castles reminiscent of those romantic days when knighthood was in flower, when chivalry left its custom and its color on history's painted pages. England is all of these and more. She is the inspiring spectacle of Canterbury Cathedral, great shrine of the ages. She is the storied and nostalgic Stratford-upon-Avon, home of the immortal and monument to his trenchant genius. William Shakespeare, master of the written word, maker of literature. His birthplace is now the Shakespeare Museum and Library. His tomb is Holy Trinity Church, long honored by the English-speaking world. This magnificent memorial theater is another tribute to the Bard of Avon, who spoke to mankind with the magic of his pen. But that was yesterday. Today, England is modern Birmingham, industrial capital and home of a thousand diverse iron and steel are the bulwarks of thriving Birmingham, second city of the nation, whose wide variety of manufactured products range from hairpins to railway rolling stocks. The highly industrialized Midlands in the heart of England teem with the humming factories and foundries that make this section a world-famous productive center. England is also Newcastle on the River Tyne, long one of the country's great shipbuilding communities. Only a short distance from the sea, this busy city of the north keeps to the trade and tradition of her past. From her vast yards have come the fleets that have carried the Union Jack to the far ports of the world. Newcastle has played a mighty role in Britain's history and in the forging of her empire. Steel and steam have replaced mast and sail, but the seven seas are forever calling. For England has always lived by the trade and traffic of the ocean highways, and so it is today. From its many trade routes, she receives the imports which are so necessary to her sustenance. Just as across its vast distances, she sends the exports upon which depends the stabilization of her economy. Coventry is another Midland city famous for its industries, among which the motor car has an important place. Today, Coventry's fabulous Lady Godiva might well ride one of these. Now the locale is Sheffield in industrial Yorkshire, noted for its silverwork and silverware. Sheffield sterling and silver plate are synonymous with quality the world over. Modern methods may have supplanted the ancient silversmith, but pride of craftsmanship remains a Sheffield tradition. Tableware such as this bears the Sheffield trademark, long a distinctive name in silver. Bradford, yet another part of the fascinating story that is England, stands for textiles. Mill workers' home line its picturesque streets, making a domestic background for one of England's most important major industries. Woolen goods are literally Bradford's bread and butter. Her textile mills are the heart of her industrial life. The great looms spin and weave her wool, the miracle of machinery transforming the raw material into cloth for the markets of the world. Coal mining has long been a foremost British industry, and one which has had much to do with the country's economic welfare. Coal was used domestically in the Middle Ages, 
and even exported by England during that period. In the 18th and 19th centuries, with the advent of the Industrial Revolution, the demand for coal as a commercial fuel increased enormously, resulting in the rapid development of vast new fields. England has always been rich in coal, that precious resource so necessary to her own modern way of life. Today, as yesterday, the English coal miner occupies an important place in the national picture, helping England maintain her position of prominence in the industrial world. Finally and always, England is London, eternal city of the Thames and capital of the British Commonwealth of Nations. London, where historic Tower Bridge spans the river's broad and teeming waters. Where Piccadilly Circus, England's own Times Square, sets the rushing, roaring tempo, and the paths of empire meet and mingle in the traffic's endless flow. London, home of some 10 million people, the hub and heart of a nation that has achieved its own high destiny. The London Bobby is a friendly and familiar figure, and thoroughly efficient. Then there are the city's great railroad stations, the swarming arteries of her enormous transportation system. Crack trains like the famous Golden Arrow, England's version of the American Streamliner, offer the utmost in traveling comfort and safety. St. Paul's Cathedral, spiritual heart of this mighty metropolis, is an architectural masterpiece and the world's largest citadel of Protestant worship. Another unforgettable London tradition are the resplendent horse guards of her Whitehall district. Number 10 Downing Street, residence of the Prime Minister, has its own traditional significance. Buckingham Palace, home of the King and Queen, magnificently epitomizes the splendor of royal London with the changing of the palace guard, a spectacle that never fails to stir the pride of England's millions. This martial music is as inspiring as it is impressive. Such is London, first city of England and the empire, where Big Ben, the world's most celebrated timepiece, still tolls away the marching hours. And such is England, Shakespeare's blessed realm, ancient land of destiny, modern land of freedom in this world of ours.